Hello everybody, I am Dr. Steve Johnson and today I'm going to talk about a topic that isn't often covered on YouTube and that is depression and the default mode network. So let's just jump into the topic. The brain itself can be divided um, along a lot of different lines, but today I want to look at two different systems of the brain. We'll have a brief overview of that. And those two systems are what are sometimes called the looking out system or the task positive network and the looking in system or the default mode network. Um, a great description of the default mode network is that it, it, is, it is that part of the brain that is associated with socio-emotional function of the brain and is responsible for the self experienced as a narrative through time. Um, the anatomy of that, of the default mode network, is uh, pretty straightforward, made up largely of the dorsal and ventral medial prefrontal cortex, um, posterior and, and uh, posterior and retrosplenial cortex, inferior parietal lobe and the hippocampal formation, and all the parts that go to uh, make up uh, make up that. So, again, looking in system and looking out uh, system, and so. Let's look more specifically into what the default mode is associated with. In other words, uh, the function of it. One that is very, very important for our discussion about um, depression will be it is associated with the autobiographical memory, the different senses of self that we have, and then some very particular cognitive tasks that we will um, investigate. The um, default mode network is activated when the individual's kind of at rest and not really actively, um, uh, you know, directing their attention to something, except um, directed toward attention, uh, attention to internal thoughts, or sometimes what are called stimulus independent thoughts. So it's not so focus on the external world, but more on the internal world of our thoughts. So um, the next part, I want to look more specifically at a broader view of the default mode network and the cog uh, cognitive tasks that are associated with it. Again, as we've already said, it is associated with the autobiographical memory, but also it is what is involved when we're envisioning the future, also theory of mind about what an other individual may be thinking. And very importantly, it, it, it has to do with moral decision making and imaginative constructs of hypothetical events, the what if kind of thinking that is so important. And then also a sense of agency or a sense of selfness and that we are the locus from which things can get uh, done. So awareness of uh, self as agent. The different senses of self that are associated with this would be a subjective sense of self and then um, a narrative self, you know, the story of the self, if you uh, if you would. <clears throat> so um, as we move on, then I want to look at more some specific uh, functions because the default mode network can be associated and is associated with certain forms of psychopathology. Chief among those would be conditions such as depression, anxiety, ADHD, schizophrenia, autism, and then there's been some research even on borderline personality disorder. And this can be due to some aberrant patterns of the default mode network and some related to its relationship to the task positive network, which is that network, which it is looking to external environment rather than the internal environment. So one of the aberrant patterns is a transition from task negative to task, um, uh, task positive. Secondly, um, reduced uh, functional co cognitivity of the um, of the default mode network, and then all the differences in the default mode network and task positive in terms of the reciprocal relationship between the two, because um, 
often they they go back and forth um, as we attend to um, something uh, very actively a problem, etc. within the world. When done, we may kick into that background default mode network, but then something happens and we're quickly pulled into the task positive uh, network. So that got back and forth is very, very important in our lives. And another one is the differences in the activation of the default mode network uh, subsystems that are correlated with uh, specific uh, cognitive functions that we will look at a, a little bit um, a little bit later. And so another word for the default mode network is the wandering mind. It's kind of when we're vegging out, we're not thinking specifically about something we're wandering uh, within our mind, uh, you know, uh, to, to different issues. And the default mode network is responsible for what we would call this self-referential self inner monologue. All of us have this inner story, this inner mo monologue and that is uh, self-referential. It detaches from the present kind of external environment by ignoring external stimuli, and it shifts to the internal dialogue um, that is constantly going on within, uh, the, uh, within the mind. And I want to say that's not an abnormal condition. The wandering mind that is the default mode network is perfectly normal, and it's, it's active shifting between the task positive network and the default mode network is perfectly normal and natural. It's problematical when the default mode network is overactive and is associated with some of those uh, psychopathologies that I mentioned before. And one of those uh, psychopathological forms is the condition of depression. And so what goes on in the default mode network when one is experiencing depression? Well, the brain is focused on this inner monologue, pulling from all kinds of places that could, to make up that monologue. Unrelated memories, um, um, all kinds of things, plans and episodes. And um, the problem can be for individuals who are experiencing depression is that they may be unable to decrease the overactivation of the default mode network, even during normal cognitive activities. So as they're going about the cognitive activities, this and the default mode is activated, then this inner dialogue is constantly going on and can be very, very uh, disruptive to the depressed individual. So um, let's look a little more on the default mode network and depression. When an individual is experiencing a depressive episode, they may not be able to shift from away from that inner monologue. In other words, they may in, um, engage in rumination, that constantly going over and over and over, that uh, monologue we call rumination. And the autobiographical memory then becomes very disorganized and distorted because it's not getting feedback from the external world, but it's comprised of these ruminations of the inner dialogue that are con uh, made up of uh, all kinds of disparate parts. And over time, the narrative can be filled with these ruminations on the negative inner world. And the problem there is that that inner world, in the depression, the inner world of the individual becomes more real for them than the uh, external outer, um, outer world. And so it's not surprising that one of the interventions that we use to help uh, treat an individual, at least within the second wave models, one of the interventions that we use to treat depression is behavioral activation to try to get the individual more involved in the external world and break that rumination that is a part of the activity of the default mode um, network. Because if that default mode network creates, you know, through the rumination and the overfocus 
on negative kinds of thoughts, then an individual can develop these kind of global negative self rating that we talk about um, within uh, REBT, but also within uh, within CBT. Such really dysfunctional global negative self rating, such as I'm a failure, I am defective, I am worthless, I'm deserving, I'm no good, I'm um, utterly incompetent and unworthy. And so in REBT, we work on these. But I think it's rather fascinating to look at the relationship of depression to the default mode network and its implications then for the kind of interventions that may help our clients who are depressed. I hope you found this uh, helpful and I, I'm looking forward to uh, some additional discussion of the role of the default mode network within specifically borderline personalities. So I thank you and have a uh,